Puerto Rico has been a place for many years of a high UFO whaling activity. At first we didn't know for sure what was the reason for this, but now uh, we have come to the knowledge that many situations that seem to imply that the island is being used possibly as, a, um, as an alien uh, uh, base or something like that. There are two main places in the island, one in, under the U.S. Uh, forestry control, which is the National Caribbean Rainforest, east of the island of Puerto Rico, next to Roosevelt Road Naval Station. And the other main area of activity is to the southwest of the island, next to the towns of Cabo Rojo, Lajas, etc. Et uh, many UFOs are being seen very frequently flying over these areas, going underground or going underwater in the coastline or coming out from the water, from the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we have had this, all these cases of these uh, many cattle and different animal mutilations, too. Uh, with these strange creatures that the media has dubbed as the chupacabras or goat suckers, which we have called the anomalous biological entities. Okay. Uh, and also there have been many, many encounters with aliens, uh, UFO adoption cases, and many such situations. Uh -huh. Didn't I hear about airline encounters in Puerto Rico? Yes, many of them. Recently there was a major incident in which uh, down in the south of Puerto Rico, uh, some police officers were flying in a, in a Cessna airplane coming out from the west from the town of Cabo Rojo toward the city of Ponce, a little farther to the east in the south of Puerto Rico. And they were surprised to see at 3 p.m. in the afternoon in broad daylight out at sea several miles from the town of Guayanilla, this huge object about a mile in size Okay, a typical flying saucer with four stories, many rows of windows around these different stories, metallic looking, silvery, with a big dome on top. And it took them about seven minutes to circle the whole object with their airplane. So you can imagine the size of these objects. Okay. Uh, they saw this underwater. Um, they arrived to the airport, told this to other police officers in the area and FURA officers. FURA is a, an, a government agency that works with the police of Puerto Rico, uh, where they have many aircraft to deal with emergency situations, uh, also with the, the fight against drugs. They are called FURA, Fast, uh, Fuerzas Unidas de Rapido Acción, which means fast forces, action forces, and mainly aircraft. Okay? Um, later on, there was this other incident in which uh, late at night a police officer coming out from the city of Ponce saw this brilliant point of light next to Caja de Muerto Island south of Ponce out at sea and believing that maybe the, it was something that had to do with uh, uh, drugs trafficking he sent some people out from Fura from Ponce in one helicopter to check this out as they approached the site they found out there was a huge flying saucer hovering me there, and the flying saucer disappeared very fast to the south. It made a single jump and appeared at another point, and then the same way came back and stayed in front of the helicopter, which froze in the air. Even though uh, the engines kept working, they just couldn't move from that spot. Okay? They were almost hysterical at that moment, the captain and the other personnel and the gunman uh, in this helicopter. Uh, it, this lasted for about two or three minutes. Then the UFO departed very fast and disappeared. And they were able to come back to the airport in Mercedita, in Ponce. Uh, and they were debriefed. They made a, an official report in which they reported this UFO, everything that happened, etc. But for telling the truth, they had to suffer a lot of uh, harassment. Uh, they were sent to psychiatric uh, tests, etc., and treatment. And they were not allowed to fly for about six more months. So, so much for telling the truth. Yeah, so in Puerto Rico, is the phenomenon of UFOs treated much like our government here in the United States, or are they more open to it? No, more or less the same as here, okay? Because you have to remember Puerto Rico has a very special relationship, politically speaking, with the U.S. So, um, the U.S. agencies and policies cover Puerto Rico completely. 
So, uh, in other countries such as Mexico, Ecuador, etc., you can find that the authorities are a little more open. But in Puerto Rico, they have to stick to the political, uh, to the official policy, let's say, of the U.S. And you know, in the U.S., even though it is accepted more or less that this is happening, officially, the institutions or government agencies won't state publicly that this is for real, this is happening. And the same situation happens in Puerto Rico. But too many people are seeing these things already, witnessing these things happening. Uh, that seems to be the case mm -hmm. worldwide. Do you have any questions? Um, so in your opinion, this legendary chupacabra, mm -hmm. is that just something, an alien, and the chupacabra has been created to you know, rationalize what these people are seeing? At first, we used to believe that maybe these weird creatures, chupacabras, or anomalous biological entities, as we call them, were some type maybe of uh, genetic manipulation, some type of experiment going awry that someone had made in the island of Puerto Rico and escaped to the environment and was doing all these type of things, you know, killing the animals, etc., in this way. Because even though no one had actually seen the creature killing the animals and extracting blood and fluids from the animals, etc., and certain organs, they were observed in many occasions in the same sites where this happened, okay, next to the animals sometimes, in the same places, before and after this happened, during the incident. So there was a direct association between one thing and the other, okay. Uh, afterwards, we have investigated many cases in Puerto Rico in which good, reliable witnesses all over the island have observed these creatures together with another type of humanoid type creatures or aliens. Okay, they are more human looking. They are not the common greys that are described so many times in ufology. Okay. okay worldwide. These are more human like. Okay? It is like a blend between these two species, our species and great type species. Uh, they are seen together. They seem to be supervised by this other type of beings. Uh, they have been seen coming out from craft flying saucer type craft or pyramid shaped craft. Always the same type, once and again in different parts of the island. And there's a pattern. When there's a pattern, there's something to it. And as I told you before, the witnesses are very good, serious, reliable people. And they are given the same details, both about the creatures, both about the aliens and the crafts. So we do believe there's something to this, okay? Uh, this is happening all over Puerto Rico. Uh, and now we have this other side to the phenomenon in which several witnesses have come forward and have told us that they have seen these situations happen or UFOs of the same description taking away cattle from certain areas, levitating them. But at the same time, they see this, what appear to be military personnel dressed in black protecting these crafts, trying for the witnesses not to see what's going on. And we have to ask ourselves what's going on. What, this a new angle, you know, it's a little strange. Uh, I don't know, like, like the fictional movie, The Arrival, mm -hmm. and it took place in, Amer in, uh, in Puerto Rico. So maybe there's some grounds to that. Well, I don't know. But there's something else I would like to clarify, if you allow me to do so. Sure. Okay, I want to make it very clear that these creatures, the so-called chupacabras, do not, I repeat, do not attack people. Everything we have investigated pertaining to these creatures, the research we have done, show us that these creatures do not attack people. We have many cases in which they have been together with small children back in the island. They hold them by their hands, as fantastic as this may sound. They look at them, they are very curious about us, about our children. But then they leave, they won't harm them. So uh, I heard some wild stories coming out from Mexico in which people said they had been attacked, etc., etc., and I found them rather suspicious because all the data we have gathered contradicts this. Also, the description they were giving had nothing to do with the type of creatures associated with the chupacabra type creatures. So I don't believe this is really happening down there in that sense. Okay. Um. There. Are why do, you, why do you think people are afraid of the chupacabra? I believe people is afraid of these type of creatures, the chupacabras or 
anomalous dilatory calentities because they are different. They look animal-like, okay? They are not very beautiful to, to begin with, okay? They are different. Uh, let's describe it, okay? The average size of this creature is about four feet tall, but there have been descriptions by many witnesses from two feet tall to six feet tall, okay? So there are many of them. Not one or two or three, as many people think. There are many of them. Another thing is that uh, to describe the, the body, more or less, of this type of creature, imagine, you remember the, these creatures in the Jurassic Park movie, the Velociraptors, okay, uh -huh. the predator type of uh, saurians that were trying to, to attack the, the kids in the kitchen scene. Okay. Okay? But take away the head, place instead the head of a common gray being, humanoid, but with big elongated red luminous eyes, okay, uh, and cut off the tail. And more or less you have the outline of the body of these creatures. The only difference is that they have hair all over their bodies and head, okay. Another weird aspect of these creatures is that they are chameleonic. If they are in the dark, they turn black or dark brown, they change color to blend with the environment and disguise themselves, camouflage. If they're out in the open and there's vegetation, they change their colors to green, beige, brownish, brownish green, to blend with the environment and disguise themselves. Another thing is that they have some type of appendage, something that comes out from their mouth, very long, thin, that we believe now is what goes into the animals, killing the animals, and produce these small holes that have been found in many of them. Because they, they comply perfectly with the type of wounds and the type of wounds inside the animals. Uh, a weirder aspect, how they fly, because these creatures do fly. There are already too many witnesses of this. And the thing is that they fly, but they don't do it in a normal way that we might think of. For example, they do have some type of, like a webbing on, or something underneath their arms, when they open their arms. You can see this like bat-like wings, okay? Leather wings. But they don't flap them. They just use them as if to guide themselves, like gliding. But they have like some quills or spine that run to the back of their, their bodies, coming down from the head, down to the lower spine. Long, thin, pointy things that illuminate themselves. Okay? And I know this sounds weird, but these are the facts, and I have to, to stick to the facts. They illuminate themselves in different colors, changing colors alternately, red, yellow, greenish, violet, orange, yellow, etc. And then it start vibrating very fast and crossing each other very fast and start buzzing and they shoot away. And this has been told to us on many occasions by too many witnesses, including some of them are uh, Baptist ministers, uh, Protestant ministers, policemen, detectives. So they know, they know better, they know what they are observing. They are very serious people. That's amazing. Why do you think they're coming at this time? Yes. Well, this phenomenon of the mutilations have been happening in Puerto Rico for a long time, as well as in the United States and in many other countries. But why are they allowing themselves to be seen observed openly? I don't know. In Puerto Rico, they have been uh, seen openly for about almost three years now, since the end of 1994. Uh, the phenomenon continues to happen back in the island, even though the media is trying to keep everything quiet now, because last year there was almost a state of panic back in Puerto Rico with this situation. Uh, you could have, uh, in one single day, 60, 70, 75 attacks, okay, in which 50 sheep, 10 cows in different places, uh, 30 chicken, goats, etc., appear like this. They have observed this creature in the same place, at UFOs, etc. So the people was starting to, you know, get a little nervous about the situation. So they sure. had to quiet down. Is little. the military, is the Puerto Rican military still involved in, like, sweeping the forests? Not the Puerto Rican military, because uh, the official uh, agencies did not get involved. Okay, officially, to the government, this does, does not exist, okay? The Agricultural Department of Puerto Rico, the Natural Resources Department denied everything. They tried to explain everything away as uh, common attacks of common predators, such as dogs, feral dogs, you know, uh, stray dogs, uh, maybe monkeys running wild around the island. 
uh, some baboons and we don't have baboons in Puerto Rico. And then if you take in account the type of wounds, perfect circular wounds through which some organs are extracted, or the small ones that were perfect too, these were not deterrents or bites of common predators. And you have to think twice, well, we don't have baboons running around Puerto Rico with surgical knives doing this type of things. Yeah. So, uh, and it was happening ones? all over the island, in too many places at the same time. So, are any of the wounds on the animals similar to the wounds brought out in Linda Mutant Howe's research? Yes, yeah, some of them are very similar, but some of them are very different. And this had to do with the chupacabra type uh, of incidents, okay? Okay, but there is like surgical removal of parts then? Yes. Okay. And the thing is that these creatures seem to be intelligent. We're not dealing with a common animal, okay? They do behave in an intelligent manner. They know the difference between people and animals. Um, in many of the attacks, we have found that some of the animals killed when we have made some necropsies together with veterinarians back in Puerto Rico, such as Dr. Carlos Soto, who have been our main helper in this type of investigations. Um, for example, in many occasions you find three holes in a triangle going into the animal. In most cases, at first, through the side of the head, or our uh, neck or, or jaw going up into the head of the animal. In all occasions, the wounds follow the same path inside the organism. At first, they go inside the animal, behind the head or the side, and go directly to the brain, cutting it off, killing the animal instantly. According to Dr. Soto and others, this technique is similar to an euthanasia technique, and this implies intelligence, as, and implies also that these creatures know that this, the animals they are killing are going to suffer, and they want to avoid them suffering too much. And again, this implies intelligence. Definitely. Also, they follow definite uh, pathways inside the bodies of the animals, mainly going down through several organs, looking specifically for the liver. Why? We don't know. Either they take away the whole liver, or part of it, like a biopsy, or they take part of the heart, and in most occasions, the reproductive organs, or a piece of them. So, once and again, the same type of wounds, following the same path inside the animals, all the time, like a regular pattern, this has nothing to do with common predators that just bite the animal, take a chunk of uh, meat again, away, and that's it. Yeah. Tearing the flesh. There's a pattern here, an intelligent pattern. How do you think this is going to affect uh, governments and religion and, thing, and things like that? You mentioned that at the very beginning. Well, I think that the development of the UFO phenomena is going, of course, to make something change in our human society here on planet Earth, because uh, religion, there's some aspect of religion that will have changed, but anyway, God will maintain its main position in the same place it is at this moment. So this won't change. Many people think there's going to be a chaos, okay? That there's going to be mass hysteria all over the world when, when it is announced that this is for real, that we're not alone, that other beings are visiting us, or maybe living already here with us, okay? Sharing this planet, which seems to be uh, uh, what is really happening, according to what's happening in Puerto Rico and other places. Yeah. Uh, someone is living underground in our, in our planet, underwater, we're sharing this, and it's becoming more and more obvious, okay? The new technology we have allows us to take more pictures, more videos, uh, the satellite scannings, etc., shows this presence. So people are becoming aware of the situation. As I said before, uh, the powers that be in our society, our human society, believe that maybe there's going to be some type of panic that may bring some type of... Uh, uh, economic shock. Uh, but I don't think this has to be this way, because even though this might happen the first day, the second day, we will have families, we will have children. Economy has to keep on running. You have to go to work to, to, to get uh, money to feed your, your family, etc. Things have to keep on going. So I think that's just an excuse. I think it's more a matter of politics, and 
economic interest that's behind all this excuse and not to say what's really going on behind to the public. True. Um, to summarize, what would you like to see change? And what would you like, where would you like your research? How would you like it to help mankind? Well, I have seen that in many cases in which I have worked with, uh, many witnesses who have been through these type of experiences, encounters, uh, abductions, uh, healings by these creatures, even though at first they were afraid, they were a little nervous about the, the, the experience, eventually they realized that what happened was not a bad experience after all. Okay, they had been healed, they, their views on life and spirituality grew much more than before. Uh, they changed for the better. And I have the feeling that it might happen to us as a whole in our society. Once we know for sure that we're not alone, that there is something else beyond those boundaries that we have established for ourselves, uh, I think people will start thinking otherwise, you know. We'll open more to the universe, we'll be more spiritual, maybe more brothers to our fellow men, and many things will change, maybe for the better, okay? And uh, that's why I'm this, because I have this feeling, and I know that what's going on is truly important to the future of all of us. And in that sense, I have made this commitment to, to help bring these things out, and maybe this way, help all of us together to get another step ahead. Well, we share a goal here. Mm -hmm. What would be your, what would you think would happen next with the Chupacabra? How do you think people are going to start hunting them down? And what, what, would, what do you see happen? Well, about the Chupacabra situation again, uh, it continues to happen back in Puerto Rico, but, but the media is not paying any attention to it because they are trying to keep it quiet for the moment. But now these new developments in which uh, some personnel that seem to be either military or some type of special agency from the United States dressing black, like, like troopers dressing black, seem to be behind also this phenomenon and in some occasions apparently protecting these crafts that are dealing with this situation or doing these mutilations uh, bring a lot of questions to our mind, okay? Uh, what's going to happen with a no? Some people are talking about the possibility that the, a deception might be created in the near future, trying to show everything associated with UFOs and aliens as negative, that, that there's going to happen something very bad, like in the Independence, uh, Independence Day movie, okay, that they want to conquer, etc., etc. And this might be a very good scenario, okay, because you have animals that have been mutilated, Okay, that are shown there, you can see them. You have these weird creatures related to this thing. You have UFOs related to this thing. Uh, and many people might get the wrong ideas, a bad perception about all of this. And this all might be, I don't know, it's just a guess, part of it, okay? Some type of deception, we don't know. Because uh, we have been finding these things back in Puerto Rico. Uh, and now it is everywhere. It is in many states in the United States, from Florida to the West, all the South and Southwestern states of the United States have reported many incidents with this type of creatures. There are incidents in Mexico, many of them, uh, all of Central America, South America, Spain, Portugal, some cases in France, in Italy, in Africa. So this is spreading. And the thing is that we have some information by U.S. military personnel who are already retired who told us, Mr. Eddie Madden from Seattle, Washington, and other people who were back in the 50s and 60s in Panama, that they had already seen these creatures down there back in 1958, 1960, 1965, and always associated with UFO situations. A little farther to the east in the south of Puerto Rico. And they were surprised to see at 3 p.m. in the afternoon in broad daylight out at sea, several miles from the town of Guayanilla, this huge object, about a mile in size, okay, a typical flying saucer with four stories, many rows of windows around these different stories, metallic looking, silvery, with a big dome on top. And it took them about seven minutes to circle the whole object with their airplane. So you can imagine the size of these objects, okay. 
they saw this underwater, and they arrived to the airport. Puerto Rico has been a place for many years of a high UFO whaling activity. At first we didn't know for sure what was the reason for this, but now uh, we have come to the knowledge of many situations that seem to imply that the island is being used possibly as, a, um, as an alien uh, uh, base or something like that. There are two main places in the island, one in, under the U.S. told this to other police officers in the area and FURA officers. FURA is uh, an, a government agency that works with the police of Puerto Rico, uh, where they have many aircraft to deal with emergency situations, uh, also with the, the fight against drugs. They are called FURA, FAS, uh, Fuerzas Unidas de Rapido Acción, which means fast forces, action forces, and mainly aircraft, okay? Um, later on, there was this other incident in which uh, late at night, a police officer, uh, forestry control, which is the National Caribbean Rainforest, east of the island of Puerto Rico, next to Roosevelt Road Naval Station, and the other main area of activity is to the southwest of the island, next to the towns of Cabo Rojo, La Has, etc. Uh, many UFOs are being seen very frequently flying over these areas, going underground or going underwater in the coastline or coming out from the water, from the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, recently we have had this, all these cases of these uh, many cattle and different animal mutilations too. Uh, with these strange creatures that the media has dubbed as the chupacabras or goat suckers, which we have called the anomalous biological entities. Okay. Uh, and also there have been many, many encounters with aliens, uh, UFO adoption cases, and many such situations. Uh -huh. Didn't I hear about airline encounters in Puerto Rico? Yes, many of them. Recently there was a major incident in which uh, down in the south of Puerto Rico, uh, some police officers were flying in a, in a Cessna airplane coming out from the west from the town of Cabo Rojo toward the city of Ponce.